A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were sensible. The foolish ones didn't take their lamps, but they brought them spoil. Whereas the sensible ones took glass of oil as well as their lamps. The bride was late, and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep. But at midnight there was a cry, The bride is here! Go out and meet him. At this all those brides made, woke up and tripped their lamps. The foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. But they replied, There may not be enough for us and for you. You had better go to those who sell it and buy some for yourselves. They had gone off to buy it when the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall, and the door was closed. The other bridesmaid arrived later. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us, but we night. I tell you solemnly, I do not know you. Stay away, because you do not know neither, either the day or the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. See, the Gospel offers great hope for us as sinners. All of us. Why? Because he is one of the most celebrated saints in the Catholic Church. But that was not always the case. At the age of 90, he went into a long-term relationship with a woman. You know what we say? He was living with a woman. He was living in sin. He had a child outside. In that relationship, he had a child. On top of that, as a youth, he decided, he decided to dabble in all kinds of philosophies that were anti-Christian. He was highly intelligent, highly intelligent, a great speaker, British uh, orator, and one who was learned in the different disciplines of study and academia. He was originally from what, what is presently Algeria, in North Africa, so Augustine was an Africa. I repeat that. Augustine was an Africa, but you always say Christianity is from Europe. Augustine was an Africa, but the Roman Empire extend, had extended from Rome all the way into Northern Africa. And so Latin was the language of the empire, and Augustine was very good in Latin. Latin was his first language. And throughout his life, Augustine's heart was restless. Because he was searching really for meaning and for truth. He was searching for meaning and truth in his life. He was restless. And all that he was doing, all that he did in his life, he was still unhappy. He was still unhappy. This is my alarm. Every, every time during Mass, somebody's alarm usually goes off to remind me that it's time to do Mass. I can't work for this alarm. Augustine was very focused. He was focused on searching for some, some kind of meaning in his life. Some kind of meaning that would enable him to live his life. And that's why he, he, he searched all over. He searched all over. In fact, one of his famous sayings, our hearts are restless, O oh Lord, until we rest in you. Because in his book, The Confessions, Augustine would demonstrate the struggle that he made, the journey that he made in finally coming to know and to know Christ and love Christ. His mother, as we celebrated yesterday, Saint Monica, was instrumental in a constant prayer and intercession. 
but also St. Ambrose of Milan, who was the Bishop of Milan, who Augustine III preached. And when Augustine III Ambrose preached, who was again a very educated statesman, who was baptized to be a bishop the next day, by public acclaim of the people, the Augustine found very much so in that experience. Augustine found that the Lord was calling him. But the final straw that break Augustine's back was when Augustine in his prayer heard the words take and read. And he took up the Bible and began to read. And he was reading a text in which the Lord was calling him to conversion of hearts and conversion of mind. And immediately Augustine realized that he could no longer live his life. My dear friends, St. Paul today reminds us of the wisdom of God and the power of God. He reminds us that the philosophies of this age, as good as they be for particular purpose, ours as Christians present the one singular gospel, the gospel of the crucified Christ. That is the gospel that Augustine, St. Augustine, after. The gospel of the crucified Christ. The crucified Christ, which is the wisdom of God and the power of God. But to those who are not on the way to salvation, it seems as foolishness. It seems as foolishness when we begin to talk about the crucified Christ. When we begin to talk about the cross, what can the cross do? What can a crucified God do? Yet that is the wisdom. That is God's weakness. And that is God's power. That is God's weakness. And that is God's power. And that is God's wisdom. And if we are able to subject ourselves to the wisdom of God, that our gospel one day came to understand, then we will too will experience that which will lead us to salvation. The restlessness of this age is a restlessness for meaning. And Augustine really has, has something to say to us. Although in the 4th century, 1954, Augustine speaks to this age in 2020 today. Because the same restlessness he had as a young man, the same restlessness in which he sought out different philosophies, he sought out different meaning, he engaged in all kinds of things. Yet, he found he did not find his peace came when he found the foolishness of the cross and the weakness of the cross. And so at the end of his life, he would say, Let have I loved you. Let have I loved you, oh God, so ancient, so new. He would come to the end of his life and say, I shall do this long time. Why I waited so long? Because he found the meaning, he found the beauty, he found the joy. Of the wisdom of the cross. He found the joy of the power of the cross. And, and, and in a real sense, we are reminded today by St. Augustine that we may seek and search after so many different things in our lives, looking for meaning, looking for, for, for some level of happiness and satisfaction, and yet we can't find it. We can't find it. You know, Blaise Pastor, one philosopher says, the, 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 that the greatest challenge for human person is to sit in your room. Because when we learn to sit, then we are able to discover the God who speaks to us. When we are able to still ourselves, then we are able to hear the God who speaks to us. My dear friends, the gospel today reminds us of the wisdom that we need to know the wisdom of God. The gospel today reminds us that we must not be foolish. And, and, and the folly of this age is to think that it has, it knows more than God, and to think that it has greater power than God. That's the folly of this age. The folly of this age is to think that it is more powerful than God. And that is what is foolishness. Because in the kingdom of the eye, we drop down and there back. Where is your power and where is your wisdom? 
one of the great uh, atheists in the 17th century wrote in, on the wall, uh, God is dead. At the funeral, someone came and wrote underneath, underneath what he wrote. This philosopher is dead. My dear friends, God's love endures. God's love endures. The restlessness of this age is a restlessness in which we seek and search after that which will give us ultimate meaning and ultimate happiness. And sometimes we are led along the path in which we come to understand at the end of our days. And that is the wisdom of God because some people are at the end of the days and they still don't come to this wisdom. At the end of our days, we come to understand the wisdom of God and the power of God. The wisdom of God and the power of God. The wisdom of these virgins, the five wise virgins, was that they understood and they were awaiting the coming of the Lord. So they had their wine, they had, they had their oil, they had their wings, and they had their spear as well. They understood, they understood that the Lord in the bridegroom was indeed coming, and so they were prepared. They were prepared. That's the wisdom that God encourages. They were prepared in all kinds of things. They were prepared to meet the foolishness of the cross. And the weakness of the cross. St. Paul today encourages us, encourages us because many would say, well, what foolishness is he talking about? Yes, it is. The seed of a crucified God is foolishness. But the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisest of human knowledge. And the weakness of the cross is more powerful than the most powerful army in the world. Because this has the power to see. The crucified one has the power to see. And it's only those whose eyes are open are able to experience that. St. Augustine, that we celebrated this morning, we thank God for the witness that he gives to us. A witness for our age, for our generation, for our youth, for our young people who are searching and, and, and seeking that they may learn what this great saint has been able to accomplish by the grace of God. Augustine is a, indeed one of the most important figures in our church, without which we can't talk about sacraments, we can't talk about baptism, we can't talk about uh, grace. There's so many things that he was an authority on and he wrote for us. Let us be and trust ourselves to God's wisdom and to God's weakness, which is the cross. Let this be our philosophy this morning. Let this be our proclamation. Let this be our witness. Let this be the joy of our hearts and of our lives. Let this be the meaning by which we order our lives. And let us not, like I was saying, have to say, late have I loved you, O beauty so ancient and so new.